Coco Force here and welcome to another Railway Model Store review. Today we're taking a look at another Class 60. Uh, in this case is the GBRF uh, Blue 60026, which has a name that I can't pronounce. Um, so yeah, uh, another Class 60. Obviously I won't be comparing it this time as I haven't made myself uh, this particular model uh, out of a Lima one. So it'll just be a basic look, uh, an overview of this particular model. Um, so yeah, let's jump right in. Okay, so we have got the detail parts back here. Honestly, I can't tell what some of this some of this is. I can see there's some wires here. There's the couplings, which for some reason aren't attached again. And then, okay, so these are plows. And then you've also got. Um, I don't know if you can make that out. You can just about see the name plates there as well uh, which you can obviously attach using blue tack apparently i wouldn't use blue tack i would use some sort of modeling glue by saying that whenever i do use modeling glue it does tend to fall off so i don't know what the best option would be for that let's take a quick look at the instructions uh, pause it if you wish uh, one thing I think is a bit weird, seems to think it's a class 31, I'm not quite sure why. Um, same there with that picture. Um, but one thing you can tell here is that it is 8-pin uh, DCC ready, um, so that'll be useful for anyone who wants to upgrade that uh, to DCC. Okay, so we're now out of the box, and I must say this is an incredibly smart looking livery. I really do like it, if only there was some excuse me to get one myself so if anyone knows if these did any running down in Hampshire in this livery which I doubt uh, do let me know and I might consider getting one of these for the layout um, but yeah so if we just start at the front here uh, we can see we've got black horns up here we've got windscreen wipers which are already fitted um, you can see the paint is very very good I can't see any paint bleed at all here um, you see the cantrail uh, splitting up the grey and the blue there uh, and then the, the no bleed between the blue and the yellow at the front here. Uh, there's a handrail here, which is separately fitted. Uh, you've got two warning stickers, GB Rail Freight, uh, the number of the loco, and then the lights, uh, which do light up, um, which we'll see a little bit later when we get it running. Uh, we've got silver sprung buffers. And then you can't see a huge amount of the detail on buffing here, but it is there. Uh, and there are multiple holes, obviously, to add the jumper cables and all of the other separately fitted parts uh, that came in that bag. So moving along to the side, we just take a look at the front here. Uh, we can see it's quite a minimalistic paint scheme, um, so very easy to apply. Uh, you can't really mess this up. Um, it is just blue. Um, but we've got GB Rail Freight logos in the corner here. Uh, we've got the handrails uh, in grey and then the door handles in silver. Uh, we've got a warning sticker up the top here. And you can also see that the can trail does continue along uh, the rest of the train there. Although I feel like it should be a little bit lower down, but maybe that's just how it is designed in real life. Uh, you can see there is a couple decals printed uh, on the bottom of the loco here, uh, but nothing nothing too fancy, but at least it is there. Uh, the bogey is very well done. You can see all the springs, the axle boxes, the ladders, um, various piping, brake piping, that sort of thing. Um, so that's all there, and it's all looking very good. I feel like you could probably have put a little bit more color in there, which is what I say every single time I do one of these, um, but hey-ho. Uh, so moving along a little bit further, um, we've got the grill, which is see-through actually, and you can sort of make out, I'm not sure if that is the engine in there or the motor, um, but if you're looking at it with your naked eye just through uh, this grill, you know, that could easily be an engine in there. I'm not sure how well the camera's gonna pick that out though. Uh, you can also see the structural support uh, just about. Again, don't know if that will show up on the camera, but it's going up, down, and then up, and then down. Um, so very well done. Um, looks really good, um, I think. Moving along, we've got the number, which is very well printed. And then we've obviously got the name, which is Helvelin. Helvelin? It seems quite a Cornish name to me. I don't know, I could be wrong there. Um, 
given that I'm pretty sure these wouldn't have been in Cornwall, uh, but it does sound quite Cornish to me. Um, down the bottom here, we've got another uh, bit of underframe detail. Um, very, very detailed, this bit. Um, lots of piping, um, lots of boxes and mechanical parts, uh, which is quite cool. Uh, and then further along, we've got um, more underframe detail, uh, which I like to see, especially with the warning stickers, which you can see there and there. And then, of course, there is another couple bits of printed detailing there, uh, including a gauge of some sort just over here, um, which is, again, something I normally complain about is the lack of underframe uh, sort of printed detail, uh, which this does have, so I can't complain too much there. And then the other bogey is just here um, and is just as good as the one at the front. Well, I say front, but obviously it's a double-ended engine, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so we can see GBRF logo printed very well here. And there's another warning sticker at the top there. Uh, we've got another grill here, slightly different this one. Uh, you can't see through it, um, but you can still see the structural supports uh, going along there. So very well done. Moving along even further, uh, you can see there's uh, a big metal plate here. Looks like it's probably openable uh, in real life. Uh, maybe for maintenance and you can see the rivets all along there as well so that's all very good uh, you can see a couple more bits of printed detail here uh, we've got the beacon rail logo uh, which is the leasing company i believe uh, that provide uh, this engine to gbrf again could be wrong there but i'm pretty sure that's how it works uh, we've got another warning sticker at the top here uh, we've got a detail sorry not a detail we've got a data panel just here and then we've got another cross decal there another thing that is here is there is a sort of dark silver stripe running along all of the bottom and again there's no paint bleed on that that i can make out and then on the other cab uh, see if there's anything i missed from the cab up front um so yeah uh, you can see all the rivets around the windows there's rivets around the windscreen wipers uh, and I think I did forget this, there is a holder there to put on, you know, a, a lantern or a headboard or something like that. So yeah, let's take a look at the roof now. Okay, so looking at the roof now, uh, we can see there's quite a lot of detail going on. It's in quite a light grey, uh, which makes it quite a lot different to the DB Cargo one we looked at. It's quite e it's a bit easier to make out the detail now. Uh, on the cab, there's this raised part here, and you can see the cab is split uh, with some rivets going along it. Uh, you can also see the uh, exhaust uh, is in a bit of a dark silver and you can see the detail on there including the rivets and then the sort of brackets uh, here and here. Uh, we've got some vents um, on the roof here, we've got one there and one there along with many many rivets and other bits of detail uh, including this part here and then these bits here which are sort of inset to the roof. Further along we've got uh, a load more riveted parts, riveted sections, I presume, you know, these all come off again to, for maintenance reasons uh, at the depot, but you can see we've got uh, the rivets going along all of these panels, and then we've got some more um, inset detail here, and then we've got some rather large vents at the back here, so presumably that is where the actual engine is. Um, so yeah, they, they look good as well. Um, very well detailed grills. I uh, can't really complain about any of that. There's no bad molding or anything, um, as you hope for a 200 pound model. Um, and then there's actually a couple more uh, inset bits of detail here. Uh, one thing that is worth noticing, uh, this side of the Class 60 doesn't have a vent, uh, whereas the other side uh, actually has two vents. Uh, so yeah, if you didn't know that about the Class 60, there you go, it is not technically symmetrical. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do now is we'll get it down on the layout and uh, do a little bit of running. Okay, so we are now down on the layout uh, with the Class 60 running very smoothly, uh, not noisy at all. Uh, you can also see there the LED lights at the front and then the red ones on the back there. And this is on second radius, uh, it's having no issues at all over the points or anything like that. So yeah, very nice, very smooth. Runner. So uh, yeah, I guess I'll just leave you now with some running shots 
And remember, if you do want one of these, uh, use code RMSYouTube for 5% off on any products uh, at the shop. And of course, if you want this particular model, then that discount will still apply. Um, but yeah, so it is an expensive model, I will admit. It does retail for, I believe we've got it for 210, and that's already discounted. Um, so it's a very, very expensive one. Uh, but if you've got the money uh, and you want a new diesel, modern image diesel for your fleet, I highly recommend this one. It's quite a unique one. I believe it's the only train in this livery. Um, so just make a very nice addition um, to anyone's modern image layout. Uh, so thanks for watching. I'll leave you guys with some clips now and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.